India has a rich culture, with many temples, hills and sanctuaries. It is well known for its majestic tourist places, hills, rivers, plateaus, plains, beaches, deltas and deserts, many luxurious hotels and resorts, picturesque nature sites and whether it is Ajanta Ellora Caves or Taj Mahal the Love Monument which comes under seven wonders of world. From culture to traditions to history to nature to adventure to man-made beauties, it has the most amazing array of travel products and destinations to offer to the tourists throughout the world. You can visit India to find yourself in the mountains of Himalayas and to be mesmerized by the ancient temples. Welcome to our channel Around the World with Dua Mumtaz. Today we are going to share a history of Sri Venkateswara Swami Vari Temple. The temple is situated in the hill town of Tirumala at Tirupati in Tirupati district of Andhra Pradesh, India. If you like our informative video, please click the like button and share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon so you will receive timely notification whenever we uploaded new videos. Let's get started. Sri Venkateswara Swami Vari Temple is a Hindu temple situated in the hill town of Tirumala at Tirupati in Tirupati district of Andhra Pradesh, India. The temple is dedicated to Venkateswara, a form of Vishnu, who is believed to have appeared on the earth to save mankind from trials and troubles of Kali Yuga. Hence the place has also got the name Kali Yuga Vakuntha and the Lord here is referred to as Kali Yuga Pratyaksha Devam. The temple is also known by other names like Tirumala Temple, Tirupati Temple and Tirupati Balaji Temple. Venkateswara is known by many other names, Balaji, Govinda and Srinivasa. The temple is run by Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam's TTD, which is under control of Andhra Pradesh government. The head of TTD is appointed by Andhra Pradesh government. The revenue from this shrine is used by Andhra Pradesh government. Tirumala hills are part of Sheshachalam hills range. The hills are 853 meters above sea level. The hills comprises seven peaks, representing the seven heads of Adishesha. The temple lies on the seventh peak, Venkatadri, on the southern banks of Sri Swami Pushkarini, a holy water tank. Hence the temple is also referred to as, Temple of Seven Hills. The temple is constructed in Dravidian architecture and is believed to be constructed over a period of time starting from 300 centuries. The Garbhagrite Sanctum Sanctorum is called Ananda Nilayam. The presiding deity, Venkateswara, is in standing posture and faces east in Garbhagruha. The temple follows Vakhanasa Agama tradition of worship. The temple is one of the eight Vishnu Swayambhu Kshetras and is listed as the 75th Devyadesham. The temple premises have two modern Q complex buildings to organize the pilgrim rush, Tarigunda Vengamambur and Naprasadam complex for free meals to pilgrims, here tonsure buildings and a number of pilgrim lodging sites. It is one of the richest temples in the world in terms of donations received and wealth. There are several legends associated with the manifestation of the Lord in Tirumala. According to one legend, the temple has a murti, deity, of Venkateswara, which it is believed, shall remain here for the entire duration of the present Kali Yuga. During Dwapara Yuga, Adishesha resided on earth as Sheshachalam hills after losing a contest with Vayu. According to Puranas, Tirumala is regarded as Adivaraha Kshetra. After killing Hiranyaksha, Adivaraha resided on this hill. Venkatachala Mahatim is the widely accepted legend over Tirumala temple. During Kali Yuga, Narada advised some sages who were performing Geen to decide who could be given the fruits of Geen among Trimurtis Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Bhrigu was sent to test the trinity. The sage who had an extra eye in the sole of his foot visited Brahma and Shiva and went unnoticed in both these locations. He cursed Brahma to be not worshipped and Shiva to be worshipped as a lingam. At last he visited Vishnu and the Lord acts as if he had not noticed Bhrigu. Getting angered by this act, sage Bhrigu kicked Vishnu in the chest, to which Vishnu did not react and instead apologized to the sage by massaging his feet. During this act, he squashed the extra eye that was present in the sole of Bhrigu's foot. However Lakshmi finds it is an insult since Vishnu's chest was considered as Lakshmi's residence Vakshasthala and Bhrigu kicked it which indirectly insulted Lakshmi. She then left Vakuntha and came to earth to Kolhapur and started meditating. Vishnu bore human form as Srinivasa, left Vakuntha, in search of Lakshmi, reached the Sheshachalam hills in Tirumala and started meditating. Lakshmi learned of the condition of Srinivasa and called Shiva and Brahma. Shiva and Brahma then converted themselves into cow and calf and Lakshmi had handed over the cow and calf to Chola king ruling over Tirumala hills at that time. 
the cow would provide milk to Srinivasa daily while it was taken for grazing. One day, a cowherd saw this and tried to beat the cow with his staff but Srinivasa had borne the injury. Getting angered by this Srinivasa had cursed the Chola king to become a demon as Dharma says sins committed by servants Shadras should be borne by kings. The king prayed for mercy after which Srinivasa said to him that the king should take next birth as Akashraja and should perform marriage of his daughter Padmavati with Srinivasa. Srinivasa went to his foster mother Vakula Devi on Tirumala hills and stayed there for a while. After curse, Chola king took rebirth as Akashraja and he had a daughter named Padmavati, who was born in the Padmapushkarini situated at present-day Tiruchenur in Andhra Pradesh. Srinivasa married Padmavati at present-day Narayanvanam in Andhra Pradesh and returned to Tirumala Hills. After few months, Goddess Lakshmi had discovered the marriage of Srinivasa with Padmavati and went to Tirumala Hills to question Srinivasa. Srinivasa, unable to bear the quarrel between Lakshmi and Padmavati, turned into stone right when he was encountered by Lakshmi and Padmavati. Brahma and Shiva appeared before the confused queens and explained the main purpose behind all this the Lord's desire to be on the seven hills for the emancipation of mankind from the perpetual troubles of Kali Yuga. Goddesses Lakshmi and Padmavati also turn into stone deities expressing their wish to be always there. Lakshmi stays with him on his chest on the left side while Padmavati rests on his chest's right side. The first recorded endowment was made by Pallava Queen Samavi in the year 966 century. She donated many jewels and two parcels of land, one 10 acres and other 13 acres, and ordered to use the revenues generated from that land for the celebration of major festivals in the temple. The Pallava dynasty in 9th century, the Chola dynasty in 10th century, and Vijayanagara Pradhan's 14th and 15th centuries were Kamite devotees of Venkateswara. The temple gained most of its current wealth and size under the Vijayanagara Empire, present-day Karnataka state, with the donation of diamonds and gold. In 1517, Vijayanagara Emperor Krishnadevare was a frequent donor and visitor the temple. His donations of gold and jewels enabled the Ananda Nilayam inner shrine roofing to be gilded. On 2 January 1517, Krishnadevare installed his own statue in the temple. After the decline of Vijayanagara Empire, rulers from states such as the Kingdom of Mysore and the Garhwal Sansthanan worshipped his pilgrims and gave ornaments and valuables to the temple. Maratha General Raghoji I. Bonsley died in 1755 visited the temple and set up a permanent administration for the conduct of worship in the temple. Between 13th-20th century and 1369th century, idols of Ranganatha temple of Sri Rangapatnam were kept in this temple for safekeeping. In the 11th and 12th centuries, Ramanujacharya visited Tirupati thrice. On the first occasion, he spent a year with his uncle, Tirumalai Nambi, learning the esoteric meaning of Ramayana. His second visit was for settling a dispute that arose between the Saivites and Vaishnavites regarding the nature of the image set up in the Tirumala temple. During the last visit, which was at an advanced old age of 102 years, the Acharya installed the image of Govindaraja and laid the foundations of the present town of Tirupati. Ramanuja streamlined the rituals at Tirumala temple according to Vaikanasa Agama tradition and introduced the recitation of Nalaira Devya Prabandham. Also set up Tirupati Jiya Mutt in 1119 AD in consultation with Tirumalai and Anthalvan to institutionalize service to the Lord and supervise the temple rituals. The Jiyas to this day ensures that the rituals ordained by Ramanuja are observed after the end of Vijayanagara Empire, the temple went into the hands of Golconda in July 1656 and then it was under the French for a short period of time and under Nawab of Karnatak till 1801. With the advent of British during the early 19th century, the management of the temple passed to hands of East India Company, who accorded special status to temple and avoided interference in temple activities. Madras government passed Regulation 7 of 1817, which passed the temple to Board of Revenue through Collector of North Harcourt District. In 1821, Mr. Bruce, the then East India Company Commissioner for Chitpur District, had drawn rules for the management of temple which is referred to as Bruce's Code. The seventh Nizam of Hyderabad, Mir Osman Ali Khan donated rupees 8,000 to the temple. The temple bears as many as 640 inscriptions in Kannada, Sanskrit, Tamil, Telugu languages. There is a unique collection of about 3,000 copper plates on which the Telugu Sankirtanas of Talapaka Anamacharya and his descendants are inscribed. This collection forms a valuable source of material for a historical linguist in Telugu apart from its importance to musicologists the temple attracts approximately 75,000 pilgrims every day.
The annual budget, estimated at Indian rupees 2530.10 crores for the financial year 2015-16, runs charitable trusts whose funds are derived from the budget and donations from the devotees. The annual income is estimated at Indian rupees 10 billion in 2008. Most of its income is derived from the donations in Sriwari Hundi. Devotees donate to the TTD, which runs into millions of rupees. TTD, the organization running the welfare of the temple, runs various charitable trusts whose funds are derived from the budget and donations from the devotees. There are three dwarams entrances which lead to Garbhagrai from outside. Mahadwaram, also known as Padikavali, is the first entrance which is provided through Mahaprakaram outer compound wall. A 50 feet, 5 storied Gopuram temple tower is constructed over this Mahadwaram with seven kalasams at its apex. Vendevakili silver entrance, also known as Nadimi Padikavali, is the second entrance and is provided through Sampangi Prakram inner compound wall. A three storied Gopuram is constructed over Vendevakili with seven kalasams at its apex. Bangaruvakili golden entrance is the third entrance which leads into Garbhadrai. There are two tall copper images of the Dwarapalakas Jaya Vijaya on either side of this door. The thick wooden door is covered with gold gilt plates depicting the Dasavatharam of Vishnu. Circumambulation around Sanctum Sanctorum in the temple or deities is called Pradakshinam. There are two circumambulation paths in the temple. The first one is area between Mahaprakaram and Sampanji Prakram. This path known as Sampanji Pradakshinam has many mandapas, Vajasthambam, Balipitam, Kshetrapalika Sila, Prasadam Distribution Area ETC. The Vimana Pradakhin is the second Pradakshinam, which circumambulates Ananda Nilayam Viminam. This path has sub-shrines dedicated to Varadaraja and Yoga Narsimha, Potu, Main Kitchen, Bangaru Bavi, Golden Well, Ankuradpana Mandapam, Yagasala, Nanla, Coins and Notla, Paper Notes, Pakamani, Almirror of Sandal Paste, Chandanapu Ara, Cell of Records, Sanidhi Bhashikarulu, Lodzers Hundi and the Seat of Vishwaksena. Garbhagrai is the Sanctum Sanctorum where the presiding deity Venkateswara resides along with other small deities. Golden Entrance leads to Garbhagrai. There are two more doors in between Bangaruvakili and Garbhagra. The deity is in a standing posture with four hands in different postures, one in Gwarada posture, one placed over thigh and other two holding Shinka and Sudarshana Chakra. The deity is decorated with precious ornaments. The deity bears Goddess Lakshmi on the right chest and Goddess Padmavati on the left. Pilgrims are not allowed to enter the Garbhagra beyond Kulashikharapadi path. Ananda Nilayam Viminam is the main Gopuram constructed over Garbhagrai. This is a three-storied Gopuram and has single Kalasam at its apex. It is covered with gilt copper plates and covered with a golden vase. There are many deities of gods carved over this Gopuram. On this Gopuram, there is a deity of Venkateswara known as Vamana Venkateswara, which is believed to be exact replica of deity inside Garbhagrai. As per Vakhanasa Agamas, Venkateswara is represented by five deities, Bairams, including the Mula Virat, which are together referred to as Pancha Bairamulu, Pancha means five, Bairam means deity. The five deities are Daruva Bairam, Mulavar Kotuka Bairam, Snapana Bairam, Utsava Bairam, Bali Bairam. All the Pancha Bairams are placed in the Garbha Griha under Ananda Nilayam Viminam. Mulavirat or Daruva Bairam in the center of Garbhagriha, under the Ananda Nilayam Vamana, the Mulavirat of Venkateswara is seen in standing posture on lotus base, with four arms, two holding Shinka and Chakra and one in Varada posture and other in Kati posture. This deity is considered the main source of energy for the temple and adorns with the Vaishnavite Nama and jewels including Vajra Kiritam, Diamond Crown, Makarakundalas, Nagavarna, Makrakanti, Saligrama Haram, Lakshmi Haram, Venkateswara's consort, Lakshmi stays on the chest of the Mulavirat as Vyuha Lakshmi. Bhoga Srinivasa or Kotuka Bairam, this is a small one-foot silver deity which was given to the temple in 614 AD by the Pallava Queen Samavi for conducting festivals. Bhoga Srinivasa is always placed near the left foot of Mulavirat and is always connected to the main deity by a holy Sambandha Krucha. This deity receives many daily sevas pleasures on behalf of Mulavar and hence known as Bhoga Srinivasa in Telugu. Bhoga means pleasure. This deity receives Ekanta Seva daily and Sahasra Kalsavishekar on Wednesdays. Ugra Srinivasa or Snapana Bairam, this deity represents the fearsome Telugu, Ugra means angry, aspect of Lord Venkateswara. This deity was the main processional deity until 1330 when it was replaced by the Malayapa Swami deity. 
Ugra Srinivasa remains inside the Sanctum Sanctorum and comes out on a procession only one day in a year, on Kishikadwadasi, before the sunrise. This deity receives daily Abhishekam on behalf of Mulavirat, giving the name Snapana Bairam, Sanskrit, Snapana means cleansing. The temple follows Vakhanasa Agama, tradition of worship, which is believed to be revealed by sage Vikhanasa and is propagated by his disciples Atri, Rigu, Marichi, Kashyapa. Vakhanasa is one of the principal traditions of Hinduism and primarily worships Vishnu and his associated avatars as the supreme god. This ancient text recommends six times a day puja worship for Vishnu, of which minimum one puja is mandatory. Rituals are classified as daily, weekly and periodical. The daily sevas in temple, in order of occurrence, include Suprabhata Seva, Tomala Seva, Archana, Kalyanozavam, Dolozavam, Anjal Seva, Arjita Brahmotsavam, Arjita Vasantozavam, Sahasra Deepalankarana Seva, Ekanta Seva. Weekly sevas of the temple include Vishesha Puja on Monday, Ashtadala Pada Padmaradana on Tuesday, Sahasra Kalsa Vishekam on Wednesday, Tirupavada Seva on Thursday, Abhishekam and Nijapada Darshanam on Friday. There are no weekly sevas on Saturday and Sunday. Periodical rituals include Jeshtha Vishekam, Anivara Asthanam, Pavitro Zavam, Koil Alva Tirumanjanam. To manage the huge number of devotees visiting the temple, Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam constructed two Vakuntam Q complexes, one in the year 1983 and the other in the year 2000. Vakuntam Q complexes have rooms where devotees can sit and wait until their turn for darshan. According to tradition, it is important for a devotee to have darshan of Bhuvara Swami temple lying on the northern banks of Swami Pushkarini before having darshan of Venkateswara in the main temple. Many devotees have their head tonsured as Makku, an offering to God. The daily amount of hair collected is over a ton. The hair is collected and is sold internationally creating a substantial profit for the temple. As per legend, when Venkateswara was hit on his head by a cowherd, a small portion of his scalp became bald. This was noticed by Neela Devi, a Gandharva princess. Immediately, she cut a portion of her hair and, with her magic, implanted it on his scalp. Venkateswara noticed her sacrifice. As hair is a beautiful asset of the female form, he promised her that all his devotees who come to his abode would offer their hair to him, and she would be the recipient of all the hair received. It is believed that hair offered by the devotees is accepted by Neela Devi. The hill, Niladri, one of the seven hills, is named after her. Traditionally, the barbers employed to do the tonsuring were male and from the Nai caste, and this caused some discrimination and failed to resolve the requests from women that they would like a female barber. A protest led by Kagganapalli Radha Devi overturned the objections, and temple agreed to appoint women barbers. Devi was recognized by Andhra Pradesh in 2017 and with an award of the Nari Shakti Puraskar by the President of India in 2019. In the Venkateswara temple over 433 festivals are being observed in 365 days of a year suiting the title, Nitya Kalyanam Pachhatoranam, where every day is a festival. Sri Venkateswara Brahmotsavams, a nine-day event, which is celebrated every year during month of October, is the major event of Venkateswara temple. During Brahmotsavams the processional deity Malayapa along with his consorts Sri Devi and Bhudevi, is taken in a procession in four Mada streets around the temple on different Vahans. Vahans include Dwajarohanam, Peda Sesha Vahang, Chinna Sesha Vahang, Hamsa Vahang, Sinha Vahang, Muthapu Pandiri Vahang, Kalpavriksha Vahang, Sarva Bhupala Vahang, Mahini Avataram, Garuda Vahang, Hanumantha Vahang, Swarna Rathozavam, Golden Chariot Gajavahanam, Rathozavam, Chariot Ashwa Vahang, and Chakra Snanam. During Brahmotsavams, the temple will witness lakhs of devotees particularly on Garuda Vahang. Vakunt Ekadasi, the day on which it is believed that Vakunt Dwarams will be opened and the most important Vasinavite festival, is celebrated with grandeur in Tirumala. The Tirumala Venkateswara temple will be flooded with devotees on a single day with numbers reaching up to 150,000, to have a darshan of Venkateswara through special entrance which encircles inner sanctum called Vakunt Dwaram. Rathasaptami is another festival, celebrated during February, when Venkateswara's processional deity, Malayapa, is taken in a procession around the temple on seven different Vahans starting from early morning to late night. The other annual festivals include Rama Navami, Janmashtami, Ugadi, Tepozavam, Float Festival, Shri Padmavati Parineozavams, Pushpa Yagam, Pushpa Paliki, Vasanthozavam, Spring Festival conducted in March to April, was celebrated with great splendor. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will see on our next video and will explore Sri Yaganti Uma Maheshwara Temple or Yaganti is a temple of Shiva in Nandial district.